Hi, I hope you're having a good Wednesday today. I have uh, been assigned the topic of Moses and the faith that he had as one of the great men of faith in the uh, Hall of Faith in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, so tonight I'm going to talk about having faith and I'm also going to talk about Moses and one of the stories. There's so many stories of Moses. Moses is one of my favorite characters. He uh, was a true leader um, and he was a very faithful leader of God's people. And I, I just want to pick out one of his stories. We'll be talking about the crossing of the Red Sea and um, we'll be talking about faith tonight. I hope that this lesson encourages you uh, as you walk in your Christian walk. <clears throat> I'm going to read uh, the first little bit of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to you. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Let's think about that word for a minute, the assurance. You know, when you go to work at a job, you have some assurance that you're going to get a paycheck. You either have some faith in the company that you work for or the person that you work for, and you trust that that person or that company is going to pay you when they say they will and the amount that they say that they will pay you. Uh, that is having a little bit of faith in something. So let's continue to read this. Uh, for by it, by what? By faith, men of old gained approval. Approval of whom? Approval of God. When they had faith in God, they gained approval of God. And it's impossible to please God without faith. We must have faith in God. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made out of things which are uh, made out of things which are visible. Was I'm sorry, <laughs> I just read that. Let me read that again. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So God spoke the word and things popped into existence. That's something we've never seen. We've never witnessed. I wasn't there. You weren't there. So we have to trust someone who was there, the Word of God. We must trust and have faith in the Word of God and believe what He tells us. I, uh, I believe with all my heart that the Bible tells us exactly what happened in creation. Let me read the first sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Satan has been trying to attack that very sentence uh, as long as I can remember. And he distorts it and, and turns it all around, makes it something that it wasn't. He, he distorts and tampers with the truth. And uh, I was watching a show tonight on TV that talked about... Uh, millions and millions of years ago. We know that that's not possible because the Bible doesn't say that. So we must take the Bible as truth and what men say as, as false or, or a lie. So I'm going to read to you um, a great chapter of the Bible. We're going to read Exodus chapter 14. It's kind of a long reading. But I'm going to start here. It's about Moses. Now, just as a backdrop here, let me talk about this for a minute. You know, Moses, he didn't want the assignment that God gave him. Um, and God got a little frustrated with him because he didn't want to do it. He said, God, send somebody else. I don't want to do this. But he did. And, and you can imagine his hesitation. He was a, a wanted man uh, in the country where he was 
going. He was probably a little apprehensive about showing his face there again. And then he was sent to the most powerful person in the world at the time, the Pharaoh of Egypt. And he was going to send him to tell him a message that he didn't want to hear. Uh, Moses was sent to tell Pharaoh, you give up your greatest asset, uh, which is these people that you've enslaved. Uh, can you imagine what a difficult uh, task this would be? But to Moses' credit, he went and he fulfilled everything God asked him to do. Over and over again, the Bible says, and Moses had fulfilled just as the Lord directed Moses. That, that uh, phrase is repeated, uh, Exodus through Deuteronomy, again and again and again. Moses followed the will of God. He did exactly what God asked him to do. Moses was a man of great, great faith. Let's, uh, let's read this, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pihirath, between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal Zephron. You shall encamp facing it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the people of Israel, say of the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts and, and all the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants had, was changed towards the people. And they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So they made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officials over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the sea by Pihirath in front of Baal Zephron. <clears throat> when Pharaoh drew near, the people of, of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Now, let's pause right there for a moment and talk about this. Uh, Moses is in charge here, I'm going to guess, between a million and two million people. And <clears throat> these people are now afraid, and they're anxious. I mean, they don't have the weaponry that uh, the Egyptians have. They don't have the horses and the chariots. They, they may have swords, but they didn't weren't ready to go into battle against Egypt. <clears throat> they were afraid they would be overtaken. And they come to uh, Moses, and Moses has been leading them all around the desert here at God's direction, and God leads them right 
it, it would appear to be in the perfect ambush position. They've got a tall mountain on their right, tall mountain on their left. In front of them is the sea, and beh or behind them is the sea, and in front of them is the Egyptian army. And they feel like, a, I'm sure, like a fish in a bowl. <clears throat> now, God knows what's going to happen, but Moses doesn't. And the people don't. And they're coming to Moses, and they're anxious, they're scared, they're they're crying out to him. They're ready to kill Moses because they feel like that he's made this huge plunder. Now, put yourself in Moses' shoes. How would you handle that kind of stress? I, I can't even imagine the stress that Moses was under at that point. But it's almost as if he's as cool as a cucumber. And his faith is in God. He knows that he's okay that the people are okay. God is going to take care of them. And Moses knows this. But imagine the faith that he had to tell the people what he's about to tell them. And, and, and if it doesn't happen the way he says it's going to happen, man, that, that he's set himself up for a huge fall. But he has so much faith. He knows it's going to happen. So let's continue the story. Then, and Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you will have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You know, Moses is thinking, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> God knew it all along. Nobody else did. He's going to lead them right through the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go after, in after them. And I will get glory of Pharaoh from Pharaoh over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who was going before the hosts of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them coming between the hosts of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud of darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove back by strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground and the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And in the morning, what in the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let's flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against us, the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians. I was reading this in another version, and it says that the waters congealed. Think about that for a minute. You, you ever seen a jello uh, with with little uh, little fishies in them? Uh, you know, it's sitting there jiggling, and there's uh, bits of fruit in the jello. You can see them. I'm just wondering if that's what it looked like. You know, the little fish. You know, jig, jiggling in there in the ocean. 
Uh, it must have been an amazing thing to see. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots. And those wheels, those chariot wheels, are still in the bottom of the uh, sea today. You can type that into the internet and it'll pull it up for you but you can see uh, pictures of the Egyptian chariots uh, in the Red Sea it's something neat to see and all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea not one remained but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea and the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left Thus the Lord saved Israel from uh, that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so that the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. At the end of the day, Moses gained uh, Respect, he gained favor from the people and from God. When you're put into a position where you must have faith, don't waver. Don't deny God. Stand firm like Moses did. You will gain favor from God and from men. I want to read one more, one more verse tonight before we before we quit and this is from our Lord it's in uh, Matthew Matthew chapter 21 verses 18 through 22 and this is about the fig tree that Jesus cursed in the morning as he was returning to the city he, he became hungry and seeing a fig tree by the wayside he went to it and found nothing on it at all but leaves and he said to it may no fruit ever come from you again and the fig tree withered at once when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how did the fig tree wither at once and jesus answered them truly i say to you if you have faith and do not doubt you will not only do what was done to the fig tree but even if you say to the mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea it will happen and whatever you ask in prayer you will receive if you have faith so my encouragement to you tonight is to have faith have faith in God he is the one who can help you and will help you through all the troubles in this life. God says to be faithful unto death and you will receive the crown of righteousness. And I'm here to encourage you tonight to be faithful to God, to have faith, to never, ever give up. Hope you have a good rest of your day and rest of your week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for this opportunity to speak.